Now it's like a loot machine. Welcome back to another PCSN Conversation. Joining us today with our basketball preview is Coach Byron Smith of Prairie View A&M Panthers. Last season, the uh, the men had a very, very impressive season. They, uh, they won the regular season title. Unfortunately, due to that famous thing called COVID, they did not get an opportunity to... Uh, to finish off and do the do the daily double as I call it about winning the regular season and the conference title. So uh so first of all, coach, how you doing? How's the family? How's everything going on campus with uh, all this COVID nineteen uh stuff going on? Let's start with that. All is well personally, you know, family, you know, everybody's safe and, and, and healthy. And uh here on campus, um uh, we're uh you know steady. And uh, just taking it one day at a time. And I think everybody, every college coach in the country in all sports are probably just doing that. But uh, but, but we're steady right now, solid, and just, uh, you know, just waiting to um, see how this deal is going to play out with our season. All right. What kind of adjustments have you had to make uh, given the new uh, protocols uh, due to COVID? You know, a lot of, a lot of kids weren't able to uh, work out as a group during the summer. Uh, probably some adjustments during your fall workout. So just briefly kind of talk about some of those adjustments that you had to make. A couple yeah, of ma major adjustments because we had no spring workouts, no summer workouts. So we brought in eight new players, eight or nine new players. And, um, you know, really just now getting to know them. You know, I mean, obviously we, you know, recruited them here. We scouted them and saw film and things like that and watched some of them. Um, you know, play in person, but um, you know, obviously there's a transition when you're leaving high school and coming to, to, to college and leaving uh, junior college and, and, and coming to division one. So it's been a major adjustment. Um, you know, obviously we, we shut down uh, once uh, in a positive test here about a, about a month ago. So we got off to got our season, excuse me, our practice uh, got started with that and we got interrupted. So, um, so there's been some major adjustments. Um, just, you know, obviously we're stressing to the kids to, you know, safety first, health and safety first, and um, just kind of getting used to, um, you know, the cleanliness, you know, wiping things down, wiping balls down, wiping baskets down, you know, our guys are in the weight room, uh, you know, wiping, you know, down the weights when they get done and things like that, you know, um, washing their hands and uh, not, obviously not sharing water bottles, not sharing towels and things like that. So, you know, there's been some adjustments, you know, major adjustments. Uh, I think the biggest thing is just not having the time on the court with the players, um, you know, as much as we normally would in, in a normal situation. But, uh, but again, I think there's something that all, um, collegiate basketball programs and, and college coaches are kind of dealing with the same issue. Um, so, hey, you know, I don't think anyone is really ahead of anyone. I think we're all probably right there, um, kind of in the same boat, uh, just making major adjustments, as you said. But, uh, but again, you know, we're thankful. Uh, we have life. You know, we have, uh, we have our health. We have our strength. So a lot to be thankful for, a lot to be positive about. And, um, and we're just going to continue to move forward um, in hopes of having a season. All right. Uh, last year, you finished uh, 19 and 13, 14 and 4 in the conference. Uh, like I say, you were regular season uh, conference champions. Uh, but you've lost a couple of key players uh, Devontae Patterson, uh, Antoine Lister, uh, to name a couple of them, and uh, a couple more than that. Uh, just kind of talk about last season and some of those players that, uh, that, that you lost from last season due to graduation, transfer life as I call it yeah yeah it, I think it's I think every you know, again every program goes through it you know you recruit very very good players they come in they have a great impact for you but 
you know, unfortunately, you don't you have them either four years or two years, sometimes one year. Um, but I think, you know, obviously, you know, recruiting being the lifeline of, of any program, smart coaches, uh, you know, obviously, you know, they, they establish a, a, a pretty strong uh, recruiting base. So when you lose very, very good ones, you, you know, bring in good ones. So I, you know, I, you know, I mean, I think if everybody could do it like Nick Saban at Alabama in football, um, you know, when one goes to the NFL, it's, it's one waiting in the wings to play that may be just as good, if not better, than that first round draft pick. So, um, not saying that we've got those type of players. Monte Patterson, obviously, was player of the year in the league. I thought he was the best player in the league for the two years that he was here. Definitely going to be hard to replace. Gerard Andrews is another first team all conference guy. Uh, that was kind of the, 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 the glue to our team, the backbone to our team, our, our, our emotional, spiritual leader uh, with his effort and his enthusiasm and just his, his mindset. So, and obviously you mentioned Antoine Lister. This was a, a rock solid young man. It's a, probably one of the classiest young men on, on and off the court that I've had the uh, privilege to be the coach. So losing those guys definitely um, is a big loss. You know, we're happy that they moved on and, um, you know, Antoine is, uh, you know, playing professionally overseas. Devontae's waiting to, uh, for the G League stuff to get going. Gerard is back finishing his degree, and he'll move on and, uh, and try to have a career overseas. So we're happy uh, that they, they were here and did a nice job um, and, um, and, and and doing well in life right now. But I'm pretty, pretty pleased with some of the new guys that we got coming in. Obviously, had had a lot of time to work with them as much as we would like. Uh, but we're really excited about the impact that we feel that they can have. So I think we're in pretty good shape recruiting-wise. Um, we just got to get to the seeds and just kind of see how uh, how those guys do when they get out there on the floor uh, when the ball goes up here uh, on November 25th. Uh, you guys have a distinct home court advantage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 12 and 0 at home last year, 27 game home winning streak. Mm -hmm. uh, but a question, the question of the day, will there be fans there to help you with that home court advantage? Because the fans are probably the biggest six man that any basketball team can have. And what would that, it, it, well, first of all, let me ask you, will there be fans this year? Uh, to, to, to my understanding, I, I think there, there, there will be. Uh, and we'll get to that point. Uh, obviously limited. Um, you know, numbers of, of, of fans and students and things like that. And obviously, you know, that I think the fans do provide a great uh, six man advantage, if you will. And we really enjoy our home crowd because they uh, they get in there and they're really loud and they really support. Uh, and I think we've given them reason to be loud and to support because we have played pretty good basketball at home and winning 27, you know, in a row, having the number uh, second longest home winning streak in the nation behind Gonzaga. I think that speaks volumes about where we've come as a program. Um, and just, um, you know, we're just, we're just praying, praying to God that we can, uh, you know, get on the other side of this pandemic and, and be able to have a consistent season and get to conference play where we can try to get back in there and defend our home court because we definitely enjoy playing here in the Baby Dome. It's a really exciting place for us. What gives you guys such a distinct home court advantage? I mean, what is it? Because, you know, everybody plays – 12, 15 games at home. We know HBCUs don't play a half and half schedule like uh, some of the other institutions, but you know, you guys get on campus <laughs> and for some reason, you guys just perform better. What what gives you that advantage? I think I think it's something in the water that we serve the uh, visiting team when they come in and we turn the temperature up really, really high, make it really uncomfortable. No, I just think that uh, we just practice so hard here. I mean, it's, it's just like a, it's like home. It's like your room. You know what I mean? You just feel very comfortable uh, in your own home, in your own room. And, um, you know, we just, we really get after it here. And um, obviously you know, we get, we get really, really good support. I just think it's a comfort. There's a comfort level that we feel really good to be at home and, um, uh, like I said, we our practices are so intense and things like that. And I just think that they they kind of get used to it and uh, get used to being, you know, being in that particular environment. And it's just work for us. And uh, obviously, we try to play hard every place that we go, every arena that we visit. But home has been special for us. And uh, we want to try to continue that trend and continue to uh, defend home court and uh, have an advantage when teams come in here to the baby dome to play, play the Panthers. 
You know, uh, I'm going to throw my two cents in, having been a, a former assistant college coach. I think a little bit it has to do with uh, they don't want to go to class and listen to their uh, classmates talk about them when they get beat at home. You know, I, that's I, just my two cents, though. Yeah, uh, I think that's probably 25 cents worth. I, I think I agree with that. Um, but again, it's worked. Um, we really, really, I mean, obviously, you, know, you always want to defend home. Uh, you know, you want to give your fans your support. Uh, something to feel good about. So we take pride in playing at home. Um, and we do everywhere we go, but it's just something about this place. It's a special place. Prairie is a special uh, uh, place to be, you know, uh, great support here on campus. And uh, it's just work for us. And we're just hopeful that it'll continue. Last question before we preview this year. Uh, talk about that. I guess that empty feeling that you probably had from last year by not actually getting to a get it to finish off the SWAC championship and to see if you can make it to the NCAA and then possibly making some noise in the NCAA tournament. Because I know that has to be a big empty feeling, especially for those ones that uh those seniors that uh that have moved on. And even for you as a coach, you're back. You've got you've got a lot of your players back, but there are never two teams, even if you get everybody back. Uh, the same team. There were two teams that are exactly alike. So talk about that empty feeling, Coach. Yeah, it was. It was def definitely uh, disappointing. You know, we just had a great group of uh, – great group uh, across the board. But, you know, we had a really special group of seniors and worked hard every day that they were here. And obviously we had a, a, a pretty fantastic year in 18-19 and winning the, the conference uh, regular season and going on to winning the conference tournament and going to the NCAA tournament. And we felt like we had a little bit more to give and we kind of came up short that first year and lost in the play-in game uh, against uh, Fairleigh Dickinson. So obviously returning our, our, our main core of guys for 1920 uh, and then having a really, really solid non-conference, excuse me, conference and winning it again. Um, and, uh, and and I felt, you know, even though we, we dropped our final two games of the regular season on the road at Alcorn and Southern, I, I felt like we were getting ready to, to get back to playing the way that we, uh, you know, had played most of the conference season and we're getting ready to start playing our best basketball. I mean, I think a lot of people felt Southern, uh, who I think they had 11 or 12 game uh, uh, winning streak uh, to close out the season. They finished really strong. I mean, a lot of people felt that they, you know, may be able to get in and, um, you know, make some noise in the conference tournament, have a chance to win it. But I, I just felt that we were the favorite. I felt that we were going to defend it and, and have a great chance to win it again. And like you say, get in the NCAA tournament once again and not only get um, to, you know, wherever they were going to send us in the play-in game with Dayton, uh, in Dayton or wherever, I felt like we, you know, had enough experience, you know, from learning from the year before. And it's, it's, it's great to get there, but you got to get there and you got to move forward and you got to finish the job. I felt that we had the kind of team experience and the leadership and the toughness to be able to get there and go a little further in the tournament. So it definitely was disappointing. Um, you know, you just one day you get the, you get a phone call saying, hey, the season's over and, and uh, you're looking at your seniors and uh, you know, obviously they're visibly shaken and upset and disappointed. You just feel so bad for them because you, you wanted them to have another opportunity to put that uniform on and go out and represent Prairie View. Um, you know, as a coach, obviously we get a chance to come back and do it again. So uh, probably less disappointing for our coaching staff, just with those seniors that, uh, you know, may never get a chance to play uh, competitive basketball again. You really felt bad about them. I was really excited to see just how far they could have gone and just how much the, the success that they could have attained, um, you know, had we had a chance to finish out the season. So definitely disappointed, um, shared some tears with our seniors and just felt really bad for them, you know, just uh, just a tough, tough time. Um, but hey, like I say, a lot of memories we created. Um, everybody's in a good place right now, good space, but it's always gonna be that what if, what if we could have played? And uh, I think we'll carry that probably for the rest of our lives. Uh, you know, and these young men, as they move on into becoming young men uh, and moving on with their lives, I think it'll be definitely something we'll, we'll think about uh, for years to come. All right. Uh, after the success you've had for the last three to four years, you know, you're coming into the season, a lot of eyes are on the Panthers, uh, a lot of high expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, those, those expectations on the court will be led by players by – such as uh, Faith Williams and Linnell Henry. Uh, you know, talk about them. Talk about some of your other key players that uh, that you have coming back. We'll get into the uh, newcomers in a, in a moment, but just some of those key players that you have that we're familiar with. 
Well, Linnell Henry um, obviously is a, is, a, is a key staple. He's a, he's a really versatile uh, big man, six seven, six eight, that played a really key role for us early in the non-conference last year. And then once we got in the conference, and he kind of, kind of, you know, um, play kind of declined a little bit. I think he started struggling with his confidence. We just went to a different lineup when we got in the conference, so he didn't have as big of an Im impact. But obviously, having him back and uh, having the experience of uh, you know playing thirty plus games last year. Um, definitely gives, uh, you know, gives him, um, you know, an advantage this year and coming back in with the experience and knowing what we expect and knowing what to do. So that's key having him back. Fate Williams is a young man that was a walk on here for the first two years. Now he's a scholarship guy. He ended up starting the last two games of the season for us last year. One of the toughest players I've coached. Um, brings it every day. Great attitude. All about the team. Selfless. Uh very coachable young man. I mean, classy young man. So really glad that uh, that he's back. And he, he, he's our emotional leader. You know, as, as we as he goes, we'll go. And we'll play him in different positions. He'll play some point. He'll play off the ball a little bit. He plays bigger than what his 6'2", uh, you know, size allow, um, um, will allow him to just in terms of his size. He plays a lot bigger. Uh, so those two guys will be key. Dwayne Cox is another guard that came off the bench last year. That's really one of the most athletic kids in our conference. Um, one of the better defenders, on-ball defenders that that uh, I think that we may have in our game. He's just so quick and athletic and explosive. So he's back. Um, Jock Hughes is a young man that was a red shirt for us last year, sat out, but he was, he was at a lot of our practices. Uh, so I think that he's going to be able to add, uh, you know, some, some help, uh, maybe in a starting role, maybe coming off the bench. Um, and Jawan Daniels is a young man that redshirted for us last year that just rejoined the team here uh, maybe a week or so ago, six, seven forward, uh, that plays really hard and a lot of toughness. So we've got, you know, four or five guys that were here last year. The new guys coming in, I mean, obviously, um, you know, where do you start? You know, you got, um, you know, Cam Mack that was obviously waiting to hopefully get a waiver for him to be able to play, uh, you know, hardship waiver and transfer it in from Nebraska. Um, so an all Big Ten, I think, third team uh, in Nebraska last year, which is uh, pretty impressive. Um, and he's a he's, he's a dynamite player. You know, we're hopeful that uh, that he can get the, get a waiver to be play right away because it definitely gives us a chance to be really solid. Jeremiah Gambrell is a six one uh, transfer from Western Kentucky. I can really score the basketball. It, uh, he's got three years of eligibility. He's a Houston kid, so we're really excited about his impact and what he can do. Damari Paris is a graduate transfer from Eastern Michigan with a lot of experience and kind of the elder statesman of the group. That's a really good point guard and really smart, but kind of a coach out on the floor. So really excited about him. Uh, Bo Gajul, that's a transfer from uh, Detroit, a 6'8", kind of multi-dimensional 3'4", uh, player that can really shoot the basketball, can drive it, very athletic, uh, great body. Um, so it's, a, you know, we've got some guys that are coming in here that we feel really good about and we're excited about. Um, and we're just hopeful that we can get to the season and get those guys out there and just see the impact that we feel that they can have. But I think we've got a solid group, awesome good players, but definitely recruited well. And uh, I think we got a chance to be really solid here in 2022. Uh, one thing I noticed when looking over your roster, you've got a lot of uh, what I like to call homegrown talent. you got a lot of uh, talent from uh, – from the state of Texas, did a couple of uh, players from next door in uh, Mississippi. Uh, mm -hmm. What what's what's the key to that? What does that mean? You know, what kind of atmosphere does that bring to your team having all those local guys on your roster? I think one thing it saves us a bunch of money in recruiting, so we don't have to travel too far. <laughs> 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 but no, I mean, I, I just I don't know something about you know southern kids. You know, not to be disrespectful to any other part of the country. I just think those kids are tough. I mean, I think. Kids out of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, you know, that we pretty much get our, our core of our players are from those those three states um, are just tough. They're just really tough. And uh, they've been raised right, come from good backgrounds and good values, good morals, good ethics and respectful. And yes, sir. No, sir. You know, gonna, you know, you're not worried about them at night. You know, you're not worried about getting a phone call at two o'clock in the morning, um, you know, but, you know, that. You know, this, these kids are out, you know, running them up and getting in trouble and stuff like that. I make it happen at any point in time. You know, the kids aren't perfect. They're teenagers and they are kids. But I just think that um, they have an appreciation for the game. They work really hard um, and good attitudes and, and things like that. So, I, you know, but we've got we've got kids from California. We have kids from New York, Chicago, you know, so we. You know, we don't discriminate. We're going to get the best available player, no matter where they're from, even if they're from overseas somewhere. But I think we've been able to get 
a few diamonds in the rough from those these three states. And uh, that's kind of our main focus in terms of the South is recruiting Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, and Georgia. We've got, had some success out of Georgia as well. So just tell kids and about the right thing and want to come to college and get an education and have a great basketball experience and then transition into life and uh, try to have a huge impact. So we, we've done well in those places and uh, we hope that'll continue for us. All right. <clears throat> now, looking at your schedule, uh... Didn't, didn't hold anything back, but put the schedule together this year, it looks like, uh, you know, you started off with Big Ten opponent, uh, Northwestern, then you've got uh, Southern Illinois, you've got a ACC opponent, Louisville, UNC Greensboro, West Kentucky, you know, you've got a nice uh, Pac-12, Washington State down the line, you've got a nice, tough, out-of-conference schedule, and, and uh, looks like you're playing in one of those dude pot uh, games that, they, that they're calling the pods where you're getting about four or five games uh, yeah. in uh, Louisville uh, right after Thanksgiving. So just kind of talk about your schedule right quick. Well, I mean, obviously it was difficult with COVID because you had the, the, the pre-COVID schedule and then you had the post, well, I don't say post because COVID is still here, but, uh, you know, you start working on your schedule, you know, obviously in, in February and March before COVID really got going. Um, and, and, and then obviously, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things changed once the NCAA moved it back. And because initially it was supposed to be November 10th, start date, moved it back to November 25th. So then you were kind of scrambling to try to get games and things like that. The games that had been, you know, canceled from the earlier schedule, uh, you were scrambling to try to get games. But I think uh, the way Houston Classic, you know, which is in Louisville, it, it gives us an opportunity. If we can get, you know, to the 25th uh, and everybody can be free of COVID and we can travel and play Northwestern, that's going to be great for us and we can move over and be at Louisville in that bubble uh so to speak the five games there I mean I think that really would get us off to a great start uh in terms of our of the first six games but I mean you obviously you always want to try to play the best available opponent um no matter where they are I mean obviously you know the HBCUs uh, obviously we travel uh sometimes near sometimes far uh to be able to put a schedule together but uh, it really was about availability, to be honest with you. You know, the Washington States and, uh, you know, Grand Canyon, uh, you know, that they're on our schedule as well. It was really like, you know, we wanted to try to get to the, the NCAA mandated 27 game uh, to, to obviously to qualify for the NCAA tournament. So, you know, it was just at some, at, it got to the point to where it was like, you know what, not take what we can get, but just what made sense, you know, what made sense. Uh, and I, I always like to try to schedule where we can move and travel, you know, different coasts or our, our, our players can get an opportunity to see different parts of the country. I think that's really good for their growth and their development. Uh, but it's def definitely was a difficult uh, schedule to put together because there's a lot of moving parts and just trying to make the dates work and things like that. And different conferences got different rules and protocols and things like that. And uh, obviously the money wasn't, this year, the guaranteed money wasn't what it what it normally would be in a normal. So uh, you get on a plane and fly three and a half hours out to Pullman, Washington. Uh, for normally you go out there for 75, 80, 85 hours. Now you're going out there for maybe 45 or 50. So does that make sense? You know what I mean? So all that went into it. But at the end of the day, we had to put the schedule together um, to be able to play, uh, you know, to be able to get, the, get to the 27 games uh, and to give us an opportunity uh, to play against quality competition uh, and, and want to go in and win. I mean, it's more than just going to pick up a check. We, we go in with the mindset, we want to pick up a check, great. We also want to have a chance to win. That's what we prepare for, we prepare really hard to go in and, and have a chance to upset some of these teams. Uh, but I, and, and obviously to put us in a position where we can go in a conference on January 2nd, locked and loaded and ready to go uh, and have a chance to defend our, our, our crown, which is something that we're looking to do. And, uh, maybe have an opportunity to three-peat, which I think uh, hasn't been done much in this conference. I mean, Mike Davis at, at uh, Texas Home was the last person to do that, maybe the only person to do that, in my knowledge, uh, since I've been around. So, and that's, that's important to us. So uh, schedule solid. I think it gives us a chance to see where we are early and, uh, and have a chance to improve and get better and match up with some teams that I think uh, if the ball bounces our way and get a call here or there, we might have a chance to win. Yeah, now it's a little early, but not gonna really actually get too much into uh, into, uh conference forecasting and everything. But mm -hmm. uh, one question I do want to ask you: we know we know Southern is right, was right there on your coattail the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So outside of Southern, 
who do you think is the team for you to watch in the conference on, on your side and on the other side? Uh, obviously, you know, uh, Texas Southern is always, you know, it's just you can't say Prairie View without Texas Southern. You can't say Texas Southern without Prairie View, no matter how good or bad, uh, you know, the teams are that particular year. I mean, it's just synonymous, those two institutions. But I, I think Jackson State, I mean, I think that there's a, a lot of energy down there uh, right now. They got a great athletic director. I'm my former boss here, Ashley Robinson. Uh, they got another guy running around down there. I think his name may be Cleon Sanders. <laughs> uh, no, Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders. So, I mean, there's so much excitement down at Jackson. And I, I think Wayne Brent is an underrated coach. I think he's done a great job. He's been uh, one of the pillars in our league. They're always well prepared. Great defensive team. They always play the right way. Uh, and they, he always puts a, a good product out on the floor. So um, I, I, I look to them uh, to, to, to be a team that, uh, you know, I'm not saying people are, are, you know, taken lightly, but I just think that they're at the point now where they've been pretty close and they finished strong this past season, last season. So I think that they're primed and ready to, uh, to make a big leap. Um, uh, and so, you know, I think Texas Southern and, and obviously Jackson and, and there's many other teams too, but, uh, but I, I look at those two teams, uh, you know, near and far that, uh, I think, uh, uh, someone that we have to keep our eye on and be, be prepared for, for sure. All right, uh, we're going to get you out of here, Coach. I always like to open the floor and let you get off any comments or anything that you need to get off your chest. Uh, this is your platform right now, Coach. I appreciate you having me. I mean, I always like to, uh, you know, speak and, and work on my, um, uh, how would I say, my deliverance, my, my media, getting better, getting better with the media, things like that. Um, we're just really excited about the 2020-21 season. We've got a good group of young men that uh, are working really hard right now and just want a chance, just want a chance to go out and, uh, and show their talent, you know, to the world. Uh, and a really, uh, my coaching staff is working really hard. Got a good group of young coaches that are busting their tail right now to prepare these guys. And uh, so everybody's going out to audition and to just kind of show the world, you know, really, uh, you know, what we've been working towards and trying to get ready for. So uh, we pray to God that we have an opportunity to uh, get to our season, to get through our season. Uh, it's tough. I mean, it's just a challenging time right now. It's very unpredictable times. This is a, a situation that's unprecedented with this virus. We've never seen it before, anything like it. It just has such a great impact right now. So it's, uh, it's a fluid situation. It's kind of tenuous. It's day to day. Uh, it's hard to make plans, as you know, because, you know, it, to, you never know what the next day is going to bring. But if we can get to the court, I think that you'll see a, an exciting team that's going to play really hard, it's going to defend, uh, it's going to share the basketball, uh, and just going to go out there and play with great effort, uh, enthusiasm, energy, and toughness each and every night. Uh, and, and really just show that uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to, to have this game and to be able to play this game. Uh, and not look at it like it's a right, but it's, it's a privilege. So we're going to play the game the right way. We're going to be competitive. We're, we'll be tough. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll let the scoreboard take care of itself at the end of the night. But we're really excited about 2021. Uh, different team, new team, but uh, that's what they pay you money for as a coach to be able to make the adjustments and be able to get a new group to buy into what you're doing. And, uh, you know, obviously to, uh, to uh, accept the culture and, and, and I think the culture is established now, but to continue the culture the way that, it, that we've established it and uh, get out there on that court, man, and just try to do the best we possibly can and make Prairie Nation proud. So that's kind of that's kind of my two cents and uh, really looking forward to it this year, for sure. All right, Coach. Uh, tell everybody out there, you know, if they got a player that uh, they need to uh, – that you need to put on your radar to keep an eye on how they get in touch with you. If they just want to follow uh Prairie View A and M basketball, uh, where to follow where to follow you guys at, and most importantly, mm -hmm. if they got a check that yeah. they want to send support <laughs> Prairie View basketball, what do they what do they uh, send that information to? Well, go 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 to uh, uh, www.pbamu.edu. That's our website. And you can go on and. Uh, you know, obviously I'm on there. My number, my email address, bbsmith at pvamu. Uh, send us an email. Um, send the email first and let me know whether uh, when the check is coming. If, if, it, <laughs> if you have a, a 611 kid that can cross over, and can shoot threes, and can and, and jump over the shot clock, 
Make sure you send me that email as quickly as you possibly can at bbsmith at pbamu.edu. But uh, we're, we're easy to find. We're on the, we're on the World Wide Web, easy to find. Uh, my number is on the website. So if the player is really good and if the check is really big, you can just call me at 832-473-0129. I'll give you an opportunity to personally reach out to me if the player is really good and the check's really big. So, uh, but yeah, we're, we're easy to find and um, we're always looking to improve and get better. And, um, you know, like I said, again, at the end of the day, we just want to put a good product on the floor and make our institution proud and make all our alumni around the country proud of, uh, of the Panther men's basketball program. There it is, Panther Nation. Uh, coach Byron Smith, head men's basketball coach of your Prairie View A&M Panthers. This is, uh, my name is A.D. Drew, and for the Black College Sports Network, we thank you. And make sure you stay tuned for more uh, exciting interviews with some of our basketball coaches from throughout the uh, HBCU diaspora. So for Coach Byron Smith, this is A.D. Drew. Thank you for your time. Thank you, A.D. Appreciate you, brother. Follow the Black College Sports Network on social media at MyBCSN1, the number one, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at MyBCSN1. Was hurting, but I didn't bandage the rope. Oh, now, now I got too sick of with it. Now we done found us on a pro sound. Okay. Look how we tearing the speakers up and we shaking the whole ground. Oh, found yeah. pros in this profession. We calling that profound oh, studio in every city. I'm calling that yo town. Oh, Some of these words that I'm using make me wanna throw down. Oh, but I got humbled in my veins yeah. and learned to tone it down. Yeah. Major league when I'm pitching, I'm needing the pitches, man. Oh, check the room with my powers and knocking the pitches down. Oh, Trying to teach you business first and put your pitches down. Yeah. Yeah. Major.